Are we recording? Yes, we are. I can see the little red light. Yes. Hi, guys. I'm um, sorry I've been a bit late putting the video up. I uh, didn't put one up last week. Naughty boy. Um, what I'm going to do um, this week, uh, one of my patrons um, was watching the previous couple of videos I've put up on um, not Don't Crop. Um, especially don't crop part de and he was having problems with a shot like this one um it's it's just one of those things <laughs> really that can prove a little bit more difficult than you actually think um and it's it doesn't quite work in the same way as the moving um, subjects around in a frame that I've done on the previous couple of videos on why you don't crop unless you really need to. And what we're going to do with this shot here, um, what makes it difficult is because it's on these diffuse clouds and it's the general colour of the subject and the general colour of the scene um, because it's relatively easy to isolate the subject on a flat cloudless blue sky this is a little tiny bit more convoluted and uh, we have to use a tool in photoshop um, to actually make a good selection but where we're going with this is to produce an, an editorial um, crop which is suitable for if you like a double page spread um, because we can have text all the way down here and we could have text along there as well and the image as a text, text background across a double page actually makes a little bit of sense so again it's not something you could actually come up with uh, if you crop this image um, because there basically wouldn't be enough uh, pixel dimensions and pixel information in the uh, image um, for a picture editor to use it as a double page spread. So anyway, that's what we're going to do in Photoshop and it, 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 it can prove a little bit tricky sometimes, so we'll get on. Um, we want to look at the raw file first of all at 100% uh, and what we'll do is we'll reset it and this is off a 1DX Mark II with a Canon 200, uh, 400F4. And uh, yeah, it's a relatively high contrast scene, which Lightroom's made a complete balls up of because it's just far too contrasty. So I'm just going to go over and do a straightforward process version swap on it to begin with. And um, I think what I'll do instead of doing that, I'll go and do it manually because um, still a lot of people keep asking me Andy why, oh, how do you do this process version swap so we'll just go back to calibration and what I'm actually going to do is just turn off solo mode and open up the tone curve as well um, the tone curve in Lightroom and the um, Adobe Camera Raw um, under the last few process versions always purports to be linear um, but it isn't you see if i switch this out to process version 4 it still purports to be linear if i sw swap it out to process version 3 it still s says it's linear however if i swap it back out to process version 2 now we see the reality of it it's actually a medium contrast tone curve so what we're going to do is with that medium contrast tone curve in, in other words with process version 2 selected, we are going to go to presets, classic general, and we're going to hit zeroed. We're then going to swap it back out to process version 5, and now you can see we've actually got the inverse of that medium contrast tone curve. It is actually linear, yes. Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw are telling you porky pies, but this is the Lightroom, what I call process version swap or PV swap tone curve, 
we're then going to come up to the basics panel and we're going to dial in the exposure back again just by double clicking on it and we'll put the contrast back in and if we also come down to lens corrections and we go remove chromatic aberration and then we come to detail and we put all the color noise back on just by clicking double clicking on color and then we can go and put the default sharpening back on and so you can see now we can see an awful lot more of the eagle and we've got rid of the excessive Lightroom's background introduction of contrast so what we can do is we can go over to presets and create preset and just call it process version swap or PV swap and just click save and that my friends is how we do that so we'll go back to reset again so you can see the difference and I'll just go and hit my process version swap and then I'm going to turn on solo mode because I can't be doing with all these open panels come back to the basics and I'll just dial the exposure back in and the contrast back in and I'll just lift up the shadows a little bit so we can open those up and ostensibly you think yeah that looks okay however we're at a one-to-one -one view let's go to a four-to-one view shall we and here is the frustrating thing about Lightroom really um, the actual demosaicing algorithm um, that is used in Lightroom is crap seriously it is crap and it causes no end of haloing now obviously we've got sharpening invoked yeah and let's just drop the detail to zero and now you can see quite a lot of that halo is gone but it's still there and we can drop the radius down to its minimum 0 0.5 and that's really got that halo under control but of course it is still there so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, drop the sharpening amount as well now in this instance I'm not going to remove it completely anybody who's bought my uh, professional grade image sharpening um, video um, will be painfully aware of the problems with sharpening in Lightroom and all the different many and varied ways we can get around it and bring in super sharpness and by the way I've just put a 50% discount code um, on my digital download store for the professional grade image sharpening so if you want to click the link below in the description um, you can go and pick that up for 50% off um, during this merry month of May anyway we digress um, but yeah go and do it got an awful lot of good reviews awful lot of satisfied customers so uh, yeah go and pick it up it's a bit of a bargain and um, so to get back to this this sharpening amount is default 40 if you remember back in earlier iterations of Lightroom it used to be 25 I'm actually going to make it 20 and we're going to hit return and so we've sort of got this halo under control we can still see a bit of it but it's nowhere near as pronounced and what we'll do is we'll go and isolate the bird in Photoshop and when we finish positioning the bird where we want it and we've got the selection looking really nice and crisp and clean we'll actually sharpen the bird up independently of the background so we will just come out to a fit to screen view and we will right click and we will go edit in edit in Photoshop CC 2019 yes we will and here we go and um, the very very first thing I'm going to do is go to uh, select and we can't really so use select color range because of the contrast of the scene and there's an awful lot of blue in the bird and not a lot of blue in the majority of the clouds in the sky yes you've got a slight blue tint to them um, 
but at the end of the day anywhere where there's white in the bird guess what color that contains yes yeah, blue yeah so if we try and select the blue we'll end up selecting a certain amount of content of the bird so we can't use a selection based on color so we'll use focus area subject is not really any good let's just go and try it see what it does uh, selecting subject mm, yeah it's all too far too chunky um, far too rounded it's not cutting in um, sufficiently to the actual bird so we'll go edit and we'll go undo and we'll come back to select and we'll go focus area here we go here we've got the focus area uh, dialog box open and if you've never been here before um, you also probably look something like that um, you'll have parameters in focus range it'll default out at 4.0 and you'll have a checkbox in auto just hit that little twirly arrow for advanced and just make sure the image noise level is set to auto as well and make sure the output is set to output to new layer with layer mask and that you've got soften edge checked and you can see i've got it on a black background so we can actually see how crappy the selection is you can have it with marching ants you can have it on an overlay you can have it on white black and white all sorts of things but i'm just going to keep it on black and we've got this little plus brush here add to selection and so you can see i've got a little paintbrush there which i don't know why but every time i'm using anything like this inside of photoshop quite frequently my brush turns to a arrow cursor a pointer it's really frustrating but while well, you're just gonna have to bear with me and where we can see little black areas in the actual subject we're just going to paint over them and we lift up the brush key and they'll come back for a little bit and then they'll disappear there's a little twirly thing going on down there and so that's looking pretty much as if we've got the bird selected but it's quite a coarse selection so we're outputting to a new layer with a mask so we'll click OK and the first thing we're going to do is get to the meat and potatoes of this entire exercise and we actually want to position the bird differently in the frame so just temporarily I'm going to turn the background back on don't forget there is an eagle in the background layer so now we've got two eagles yes and if I pop an empty layer over the top and I get my line tool and I come into the bottom left corner and see I do a lot of diagrams because I've got arrowheads enabled on my lines so we've actually got this diagonal line here and we can also go and get a vertical ruler guide and it will sort of snap a little bit there we go um, just pull it up again where are we just pull it up uh, pull it across there we go and it just snaps in and that's basically if this was a double page spread that's where the staples would go yeah in other words it's the middle so we're just going to come onto our background copy layer which is where we've got our isolated eagle remember yeah and all we're going to do is with the move tool we're just going to grab the eagle and sort of put him just where we want him which would be over there so his eye line and his the the, the his head and roughly the angle of this wing is all pointing down at this bottom left hand corner so we could shove him a little bit further across and a little bit higher we don't want to go too high um, because we'll be encroaching on the edge of the frame but there would be fine and what we're actually doing is we're giving a picture editor or a picture by um, a nice option to have all this empty space on the left hand facing page of the magazine 
where we can put a article title and some text reversed out and maybe come along here and then we flip over the page and we'll get back to normal column text anyway we've now got the composition set so we don't need that shape anymore so we can go and delete that layer and I'm just going to hide the bird and um, I'm also going to grab that guide and scoot it out of the way there and we'll go and get a lasso tool and we'll just come in and do a rough lasso around the eagle rather like that and then we'll go edit come here edit um, content aware fill and all we're going to do is remove the eagle and uh, you know i mean i'm not going to um, go to great lengths to get this perfect because it, it's just make it'll just make the video too long um i've shown you quite a few times how to use this um, new content aware fill feature and uh, if you don't like it we can always use all sorts of we can go and play around with the controls here or we can go and use a clone stamp tool or whatever inside of photoshop a little bit later and just make it look just that little bit more uh, convincing should that be um, your desire and so we'll just go select deselect here yeah, you see we've got a, a bit of an odd ball area there i might just go and get the clone stamp tool um, make it quite big um, 35 percent opacity and um, relatively soft brush and i might just come in and sample there and just sort of paint in with the clone stamp tool and just sort of make that a little bit more convincing so that's that i mean it's really easy to produce a decent convincing fill for where that eagle was and you don't need me to show you how to do that so let's get back to it and we have got our eagle positioned exactly where we want it from a compositional point of view remember we're going through an editorial double page spread sort of composition and um, all we need to do now is come and look at it at 100 percent and you can see that we've got this black edge and that's fundamentally because the tail was against a darker part of the sky than we've now got it but the tail was never behind a darker part of the sky the tail was in front of a darker part of the sky and therefore the boundary between the feathers and the sky is a little bit darker in this image so what we've got to do is we've got to go and refine the edge and oh god this this just drives me nuts yeah what we'll do is we'll come to the mask and we'll command click on the mask and that will bring up the selection that made that mask in the first place now then we need to refine that selection and photoshop now has this god awful thing called select and mask and this is a complete and utter pain in the arse seriously some people manage to get it to work on certain images it works better on jpegs than it does on 16-bit tips that's for starters so just don't go believing everything you see about it on youtube but all in all it is the biggest pile of bullshit i've come across in ages especially because it replaced something that worked exceptionally well and that was called refine edge so we're going to cancel select and mask and with this selection active and don't forget if you're one of my patreon members over on my patreon page you can actually go and download this raw file on yourself so you can work on it um if we go uh to select if we come down to select and mask but don't activate it don't click it hold down the shift key keep your finger jammed down on the shift key and then click select and mask and whoop de woo would you believe it not a lot of people know this 
but we can bring up the old legacy control refine edge which is a piece of cake to use so first thing we're going to do is come to the output to section and we're not going to output it to a selection we're going to output it to this layer mask so what we're going to do is we're going actually going to refine the edge of this existing layer mask don't click on smart radius don't make any adjustments to any of these just leave them at zero and we've got a control here for refine radius and erase refinements just select refine radius if it's not already selected and you can see we've got this dark edge around the um, white tail feathers of the eagle and we've got a little bit of um, sky in there a little bit in down there and a little bit in down there I'm not going to go all around the um, subject to get rid of all the bad looking edges because most of the bad looking edges look quite good on the finished image because the tones behind them and the colours behind them haven't changed a lot but the biggest differential uh, between the old and new versions of this image is around this tail so with this refine edge brush uh, we're going to just go around here and you watch my brush will change back to an arrow cursor so anyway here we go and we're just going to work our way roughly around the tail and just keep going around here I am that hot in this office and uh, I don't know why but my my hands are, are sort of sticking to my um, my Intuos tablet a little bit. And we'll just take the uh, um, pen tool off there. And you can see we've now removed quite a lot of that dark edge. We're just going to work our way along here as well. And I just want to get into these couple of areas down here and that one in there and just take the pen tool off again and there we go so we've cleaned up that edge quite successfully do we want to activate decontaminate colors not really because it's not doing a great deal it will end up putting a black edge around here around some of the areas of the wings that have got a little bit of the blue tint to them and they seem to be matching up exceptionally well um, so we don't want to be doing that and um, plus the fact if we have decontam if we activate decontaminate colors it will just produce a new layer with a new layer mask and we don't want that we want to stick with the original layer so as i said i'm not going to bother going all around the image and i'll give you a tip um, for this really and truly what we should do is there is a secret to using this tool if you need to deploy it and we it's best if you can go all around the image without lifting off once and go all around the image and just do it in one pass that's a little tip for you but anyway I'm just going to click OK on that because I've done what I wanted to do and you sort of get the main drift if you like of um, how I'm doing this complete rejigging of this image and there we go if we go into the image at 100% now and we scoot across we can see the tail blends an awful lot better we can make it a little bit better still if we need to but all I want to do at the minute is sharpen the image i've now clicked on or made active the image part of this layer we're not working on the mask anymore and all we're going to do is go filter and sharpen and we'll go unsharp mask and we'll use an amount of 100 a radius of 0 0.4 pixels and no threshold and as you can see if i take the preview off and turn the preview back on it's making quite a big difference to the sharpness of the bird overall and I think he's looking 
really really cool we go across the rest of the image we check all up here this selection edge is absolutely perfect um, we're not worried about that this is all looking okay this wing is slightly it's not out of focus it's a little bit of motion blur because the shutter speed wasn't quite fast enough to freeze these primaries here but everything's looking super duper and um, there's no hard edges there's no pixelation and so what we can now do is go layer and we can go flatten image and we could save that if we wanted to and um, but just where we've got a little bit of dark edge left on here this is if you're really into pixel peeping what we can do is get a new layer or new empty layer over the top and we can pardon me pull up our clone tone clone stamp tool what on earth was that oh yes because we've got a really big brush um, <laughs> we obviously need to drop the size of the brush um, quite considerably that's looking a little bit better and what I'm going to do is squeeze the brush in and make it very oval and um, might just take the size down a little bit more make it five pixels that looks about right and all I'm going to do is just have it set to an opacity of about what 50% sampling current and below and i'm just going to come in here hold down the alt key to sample and then just move in and just go along that dark edge rather like that and we can come along and just dilute that dark edge you don't want to do it too much um, otherwise you will actually sharpen the edge and then you will make it look like a bit of a cardboard cutout so if we hold down the spacebar key and just come and work our way down here just with one pass soft brush 65 percent or 50 percent opacity and then we can just change and just use the pointy end of the brush just to come in and remove any of that dark edge and if we just sort of pull the image back down again and um, if we turn that clone stamp layer off you can see we've got the dark edge up here and if we turn it back on now that dark edge isn't quite as obvious and so we'll go out to a fit to screen view and uh, yeah we'll go layer and we'll go flatten image and we'll just go file and we will go save and then um, there it is it's saved out now we'll come back to Lightroom and here is our new image and fundamentally we could just go and warm it up just a little tiny bit if that's what we so desired to do and um, Bob's your uncle there is our new newly created image with a nice double page spread or DPS composition for editorial and we haven't lost a single pixel uh, of uh, dimension from the image it's a full resolution image and it was derived from that raw file which actually looked uh, rather crappy like that and don't forget because we sharpened it in Lightroom it doesn't need any more sharpening we can come and look at it at a uh, one-to-one -one view in Lightroom and it looks fabulous so there you go guys I hope you enjoyed that lesson just remember if you need to refine a selection edge um, select and mask is a pain in the arse 999 times out of a thousand and if you go to select it over in Photoshop the only way as far as I know that you can invoke the old legacy refine edge which is a lot simpler is from the contextual menu up here select, select and mask but don't click it shift click and uh, you'll find that if you need to select or refine the selection edge 999 times out of a thousand you'll find the old legacy refine edge tool a lot more useful and a lot easier to handle yes you will okay guys sorry if it's wobbled on for uh, a little bit longer than i intended but that's a really powerful tip shift click on select and mask 
um, to get that refine edge dialog box you, it really is a make your life a lot easier and um, so yeah there you go I shall see you very soon so uh, until the next time toodaloo